and no legs, nigga. <laughs> Yo, I'm talking to That's you, bro. not funny, bro. That's what? not funny. Yo, what are you talking about? You know who you're talking bro? to, bro? You, you see me? You know who you're talking to? Fucking legs, though. All y'all do, what? Yo. Nah, you got no legs, bro. Stop playing. Yo, Yo, come on, bro. Stop playing with me. No legs, nigga. Yo, bro. <laughs> That's not funny, bro. Three. Yeah, yeah. Two. One. Go. I'm journalist Irvin Philly Sean with the fitnessjournals.com and today I'm giving y'all some leg hell. Well it might not be leg hell for uh, a lot of people, but I'm giving you some bodyweight leg workouts. You can do this anytime, anywhere. Uh, quick and effective, nothing crazy, just quick and effective. It doesn't have to be long in order for you to get the benefit. So ideally after the warm up, you do your general warm up, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do explosive exercise. So I usually start with explosive um, bilateral before moving into the unilateral exercises. So as you see, this is explosive uh, jump tucks, jump squat tucks, you could call it. Uh, yeah, starting with the explosive. So in, in the structure of a workout, beginning with the explosive, um, bilateral and then moving into the single joint unilateral stuff so as you see here these are sissy squats uh, man this is a super effective workout you don't have to do it on the elevated surface you could go ahead and do it on um, something that is on a flat surface and you really want to um, work on targeting the quads developing that quad strength this is one of a what is one of the go-to exercise that you should not omit if you are trying to develop that quad strength so <clears throat> because he's on the on the elevated sur surface it does allow for more range of motion uh, obviously the lower you get keeping that balance um, that's the goal so as you see for a good amount of the reps he was going uh, with his knees his knees were going below the actual tire um, and that's why he's on the elevated surface other than that you can do it straight on the floor and you'll get the same um, effect so this is more so like this is full body as you can see but obviously you can see the quads um, hamstrings when he's doing the it going into the standing position but you're working core uh, the additional resistance obviously does just add additional resistance makes it a little bit more challenging um, to perform so he's doing the press at the top you don't even need weights to do this so if you don't have any form of resistance totally fine you do not need it. Uh, it we're just throwing it in there for the strength hypotrophy aspect <sighs> we know how front squats go or squats in general so these are front squats still performing bilateral exercises getting the power the, the strength power uh, exercises out of the way in the bilateral fashion before moving into single joint um, exercise as you'll see here from a different angle uh, you should know what a squat a squat is by this by this point you should know what a squat is if you are a subscriber here or if you've ever worked out before you should be familiar with the squat so this is a front squat once again if you don't have resistance you don't have to use it but this just goes to show whatever you have you can use it this is a, a log that is here in the park and we use it so these are now moving on to the unilateral exercises this is a pistol squat um, elevated pistol squat the elevation is just to once again get a uh, further range of motion if you have lack of mobility um, in your ankles hips uh, knee and you can't go down too low this is a good exercise to perform um, on elevated surface and once again if these are too easy we already know that they are modifications not modifications there are progressions and this would be a uh, weighted pistol squat. So as you know, once again, you want to make it a little bit more uh, difficult. The purpose of these exercises are really to help with stability. Well, uh, specifically, I'm talking about the, the pistol squat stability, um, work on the hamstrings, glute, not the hamstrings, but the, the quads. And you do get the glutes to a degree, but mainly the quads, that is the purpose. Of working this so you want to develop strength and hypertrophy this is a good exercise and you can go ahead and throw on 
the additional resistance there. Now you want to target hamstrings, you want structural balance, so um, this is using a resistance band. You could get a resistance band that is light, heavy, whatever it is that works for you. Um, as you see, just going and do the curl there. So I'm pushing out, uh, I'm opening up my feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. And that way you're getting the abductors as well as the glutes. So the glutes and hamstrings, sorry, but mainly the, the hamstrings and the, the hamstrings and the abductors the abductors along the side uh, region of the hip there so just like you would do a hamstring curl you just uh, initiate the movement by bending the knee bringing the heel up into your butt uh, up into your glutes there that is how you would initiate <clears throat> the movement so next we have here um, this is single leg deadlifts so once again you use what you have clearly if you don't have anything at all to use, you can do this. It's probably not the best exercise. If you don't have any additional resistance, you could probably do something like the bilateral um, hip or you could do unilateral um, glute bridges. That's another exercise you could do. But this is good for targeting the hamstrings and glutes. So always remember when performing unilateral exercises, if you're doing one side, do the same amount of resistance um, and the same amount of repetitions, assuming you don't have some type of unilateral um, disproportions or, or, or about, um, injuries or something like that. That's what will actually determine if there's a specific amount of load or variation that you should do for uh, a different side. Other than that, keep everything the same. All right, so uh, it's important to warm up before, before any exercise. Why? Because you want to avoid injury. What is the purpose of warming up? Allocating blood, getting blood to the muscles that will be working, increasing extensibility, um, elasticity. So now those muscles, they can go through a further range of motion. You wouldn't take a rubber band out of a, a freezer and just try and pull it like that. No, it's going to break. It's going to tear. Same thing with your muscles. They have the same elasticity properties, elastic properties. So that is the purpose of warming up. The warming up we're doing is a specific warm up. This is not a general warm up. It's a specific warm up warm-up um, which is a lighter load targeting the same muscle groups so that's the purpose of this warm-up before we increase in, in resistance and volume that's for the squats right? that's for the squats so we start, Any? We, well yeah so we started with like what like one plate instead of going all yes, the way to yes. three plates. You don't just one. slap on three plates immediately and go. You want to find, like, if you know your, your rep maximum or percentage of your or rep maximum, you could do, like, 30% of your rep maximum. It's a lot lighter than doing 90% of your rep maximum, which is pretty much inevitably going to damage you if you just go into it immediately. So warming up with, like, your 30% rep, rep maximum, uh, that should get you going. You're good to go. So after uh, the warm-up set, doing the, the we did um, how much did we do? Uh, I think we had two plates. I th yeah, I believe um, that was the warm-up set, and then we moved up. Obviously, after the muscles were warmed up, and then moved up into a heavier set. So all these different exercises, the the, the amount of repetitions and sets you want to do depends on your goal. If your goal is strength, um, then anywhere from from six to eight repetitions maybe maybe ten um that's uh, if you want to work on strength that's a good rep range right there you can do anywhere from three or four sets if hypertrophy is the goal um anywhere from from 10 to 12 and that's the ideal range for hypertrophy walk up walk up uh, after skipping leg day for how many days? A long time. This is after skipping leg day for a minute. Too much calisthenics, right? So once again, the main goal, of course, the, uh, not the main goal, the goal um, that you're trying to achieve, that's what will determine the amount of reps that you're performing and the amount of sets. So, and of course, you take you have to take into consideration how much load um, you're under. So. Anywhere, if you're doing like a one rep maximum, then you're working on power. If you're working on developing strength, then the rep range would be um, anywhere from, from six to eight. If you want hypotrophy, anywhere from 10 to 12, that's the range. Anything above that is endurance. And of course, no leg day would be complete without targeting calves. So this is uh, just standing calf raises with additional resistance. Like I mentioned before, majority of these exercises can be done without 
uh, resistance, but clearly if the goal is strength, power, uh, you have to introduce resistance. It's just one of the op the most optimal ways in, uh, to get to that goal. So um, we start here with uh, the standing calf raises with the additional resistance and then go into these hops right here, these explosive hops that staying on the balls of the feet and just bouncing just like that. So that is it for today's workout exercises. Go ahead and incorporate this into your next workout. Yo guys, we just smashed that routine. So what do you gotta do bro Yo guys? Smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, Smash that share button. Leave a comment below. Let us know about our legs. <laughs> Let us know about our legs. You Let know the vibes. Know about the leg workout. Uh, <laughs> I know the vibes. Yeah. What else, man?